I'm definitely inspired by the potential to have an actual impact and make people's lives better halfway across, around the world. For my master's research, I am redesigning the Jaipur foot, which is a low-cost prosthetic foot that's used in India as well as all over the developing world. Right now the foot is handmade and they're very happy with how it performs, but they'd like to scale up the manufacturing process to make it cheaper, more globally accessible, and have a more consistent quality. The world's a giant place and there's 7 billion people out there and I don't want to spend my entire life in one tiny corner of that with interacting with people that all come from similar places and have similar experiences. MIT absolutely has afforded me the opportunity of working with people in developing countries and, and people all over the world. I, th I think the signs were always there that I was going to be a mechanical engineer, but I didn't know what it was until my sophomore year of high school. I joined the first robotics team and learned what mechanical engineering was and just fell in love with it and been doing it ever since. I was convinced that I was going to go someplace else for graduate school because I'd already been here for a couple of years. You know, I felt like it would be a good idea to diversify my education. Um, but what brought me back was actually the project that I'm working on right now with Professor Amos Winter. What is unconstrained deflection? Katie brings to the table a set of skills that would be hard to find in most graduate students. It makes contact here and here. It's not like she is contact. right at the top caliber of being able to crunch the numbers and do the theory. But then the, she can go across the world and be in a village in India and understand the social factors that are going to be important behind the technology. We're looking at the way that a physiological ankle moves and we're trying to recreate that motion without any active elements, just out of the, the geometry and the material properties um, you know, using fundamental engineering principles. It's incredibly exciting to work on this project. My mom is a physical therapist, so uh, like the field of prosthetics and, and things along those lines have always been really attractive to me. When I put on the prosthetic boots today for the first time with our new prototype, I was able to walk around in lab and get some idea of what someone who uses a prosthesis might feel when they're using that particular prototype. From here, the next step is to go to India, where I'm going to have people who actually use prostheses wear our proof of concept prototype and give us some feedback. And then I'm going to ask them to walk around in a gate lab and we'll get some uh, like ground reaction force data, some kinematic data. And lastly, I'm going to ask them what, what they feel, because they're, they're obviously the experts in this. It's moments like this that make the years of research and make all the hours of calculus and, and math and, and literature reviews and all that, it makes all of it worthwhile.